Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to study about all the causes which make water hard water. We all know that we have to use soft water for each and every purpose. Hard water is hard water can hardly be used, not even for drinking, domestic purposes, industrial purposes. For all these purposes, what we need is soft water. And for that, we need to convert hard water into soft water. But to convert hard water into soft water, we should know what exactly is there in hard water. And that is the reason why today we study the causes of hardness of water. Let us see the different ways and the different processes through which our water passes and the impurities get collected in it which makes the soft water hard. Hard water is nothing but soft water plus impurities. Once you remove all the impurities, the hard water becomes soft water. So let us see all the reactions and processes which take place for hard water. Rainwater absorbs carbon dioxide from air and also from decaying plants on soil. So whenever we talk about water, we talk about the water cycle. What exactly is the water cycle? When the sun rays or the heat is passed onto the sea water, it evaporates and forms clouds. The water which is present in clouds is soft water. Why? Because it is water evaporated from the sea. It is as good as distillation. All the impurities are there in the sea. Only H2O evaporated and it forms the clouds. Now these clouds have soft water. But when these clouds pour down, what exactly happens? It mixes with the air. When it mixes with the air, all the acids and the pollution which is there in the air mixes with water and that eventually flows down. When it flows down, it reaches the earth. What does the earth have? It is soil. So all the plants and the decaying material of the soil also mixes with the water, making that soft water hard. Such water when flows over the rocks containing calcium and magnesium carbonates react slowly with these substances to form bicarbonates which are much more soluble. Let us just have a look on this reaction. I have H2O plus CO2. Now H2O is my water and CO2 is carbon dioxide which is a gas. So when my H2O mixes with CO2, it forms H2CO3. So what is exactly happening in this reaction? In this reaction, there are two reactants forming one product. So I have H2O which mixes with the carbon dioxide which is present in the air. Now let us just see the balancing of this reaction. I have two hydrogens on the reactant side. When I am looking at the reactant side, I include all the reactants which are present there. So including this and this, I have two hydrogens over here. So on the product side also, I should have two hydrogens which are over here. Let us see the number of carbons over here. Including H2O and CO2, I have one carbon. Over here also, I have one carbon. Let us see the number of oxygens. One oxygen plus two oxygen. One plus two, that is three. Over here also, we have three oxygens from H2CO3. Now when this H2CO3 mixes with CaCO3, what exactly happens over here? We get CaHCO3 twice. Now let us see how did we get this. Again there are two reactants over here forming one product. And it is very important to see that this product is soluble. When I say this product is soluble, that means this product will mix with water and form a homogeneous mixture. That means water plus this product will form one mixture. And that is why this can be a permanent impurity which is implanted into the water which cannot be removed by simple filtration method. Let us see now the balancing of this reaction. We have H2CO3 plus CaCO3. Over here I can see that CO3 and CO3, there are two CO3s on the reactant side. I am not taking a particular element, I am not taking carbon or only oxygen over here. I am just taking CO3 together. Over here I can also see that I have two hydrogens. So I know that H and CO3s are two on my reactant side which is HCO3 twice. That means this entire HCO3 is twice. The CO3 over here is two times and H over here is two times. This is HCO3 twice. And what remains is calcium. Calcium is one over here. Calcium is one over here as well. On the surface layer, there are also chlorides and sulfates of calcium and magnesium and these salts are soluble in water. And also I have to say that the chlorides and the sulfates form the permanent hardness. When I am talking about hard water, there are two types of hardness, temporary hardness and permanent hardness. Temporary hardness is formed by carbonates or bicarbonates, but the permanent hardness is formed by the sulfates and the chlorides. And these do not even need a reaction. They are immediately soluble in water. So when water comes in contact with sulfates and chlorides, they mix with water and make water permanently hard water. 
Thus, water flowing over rocks and surface layers contain bicarbonates, chlorides, and sulfates of calcium and magnesium in the dissolved state. And that is the reason why we cannot have water coming directly from the springs or the streams that because they come cutting through the rocks. Even in the mountainous regions, the water comes cutting through the rocks and because of that, all the sulfates, the chlorides and the bicarbonates present in the rocks dissolve in the water eventually making that soft water hard water. Such water is known as hard water which does not produce good lather with soap solution. Soap is a mixture of sodium salts of fatty acids like stearic acid, oleic acid and palmitic acid. Soap is soluble in water and forms lather due to which it has cleansing property. In the simplest way in which we can find out a water is either soft water or hard water is only by mixing soap in it. So if I have soap plus water in it, it has good lather in it, good lather formation, that means that water is soft water. But if I mix soap with hard water, it will not form lather at all. What it will be forming is a scum. Scum is a curd like substance which does not resemble lather. And that is the reason why hard water is not used either for industrial purposes nor for domestic purposes. Now let us see the reactions of soap with water and see what exactly the formations are. When soap is added to hard water containing calcium and magnesium salts, when I'm talking about calcium and magnesium salts, I'm actually talking about the permanent hard water. So in this reaction, we are talking about soap plus permanent hard water. That is Ca++ and Mg++. Insoluble calcium and magnesium salts are obtained by double decomposition reaction. Now let us very carefully look at the reaction over here. We have soluble sodium stearate or that is soap. When you see soap, soap is a sodium salt of a fatty acid. What do I mean by sodium salt of a fatty acid? This is a fatty acid, a fatty acid. The functional group of a fatty acid is nothing but C double bond O. C double bond OH is my normal carboxylic acid. But now this is a sodium salt. It is not carboxylic acid. And that is the reason why instead of H, I will have sodium. C double bond ONA. And this has a long chain of carbon attached to it. So C17, H35, C double bond ONA plus CaCl2. CaCl2 is nothing but the calcium and the calcium which is present in my hard water forming CaC17, H35, C double bond O twice plus 2 NaCl. Insoluble calcium stearate. This is a precipitate. Insoluble calcium stearate plus the salt that we have 2 NaCl is my normal sea salt sodium chloride. So what exactly happens over here? The valency of calcium is 2. It is very important for us to remember that the valency of calcium is 2. And that is the reason why over here we have taken the coefficient of the soap as 2. This calcium attaches itself to the entire soap. Forming Ca, C17, H35, C double bond O twice. So what happens over here? This Na goes away. Why? Because this calcium has attached itself in place of Na. And because of that, we have two times NaCl. Why? Because now I have two Na on the reactant side and Cl2 on the product side forming two NaCl. Now let us see the second reaction. We have two times C17, H35, C double bond O, Na. Again, this is nothing but a sodium salt of fatty acid, also known as soap. Plus CaHCO3 twice. Now, what is CaHCO3 twice? This over here is my calcium carbonate. Now, when I'm talking about the carbonates and the bicarbonates, we are talking about the temporary hardness of water. So, over here I have soap plus temporary hard water. This is the reaction of soap plus temporary hard water. The previous reaction which we did was sodium plus permanent hard water. This is sodium plus temporary hard water. Again, there is not much difference in it. This Ca replaces this Na. And that is the reason why the two valency, the valency of calcium is twice. And that is the reason why we have HCO3 twice. So what happens over here? This Ca will replace this Na. And then we will have Ca into the bracket. C17, H35, C double bond O twice, which is again a precipitate. Now when I'm talking about precipitates, what exactly this precipitate forms is nothing but scum, the curd like formation which we talked about. Plus it will have 2 NaHCO3. Now what is this 2 NaHCO3? From where did it come? Since this Ca got attached with this entire soap formation, just leaving this Na, we have 2 Na left from the reactant side and HCO3 twice is left from the reactant side. 
So over here I can write 2Na HCO3. So from here this equation is balanced. Let us look at another equation over here again with sodium salt of fatty acid also known as soap plus MgSO4. Now when I am talking about MgSO4 it is not temporary hardness. MgSO4 is not a carbonate or a bicarbonate. But MgSO4 is a sulfide of what? Magnesium. Now magnesium sulfide when I am talking about this, this is permanent hardness not temporary hardness. So this reaction is of soap with permanent hard water with the help of magnesium salts. Now again let us just have a look at this. What happens over here is twice C17 H35 C double bond O Na plus MgSO4. What happens over here? We have Na twice Na. Now we should always keep this in mind that SO4 gives takes away two valencies. SO4 doesn't take one valency. If you know that H2SO4, so for one SO4 we need two H's. So in the same way Mg itself can give two valencies to SO4 and that is the reason why we have one Mg and one SO4. Why? Because Mg itself can take two things, has twice valency. Correct? So now we will just see what happens over here. Instead of this Na, instead of this sodium, Mg takes place. So this entire salt that is C17, H35, C double bond O and the entire thing twice gets attached to my Mg. Can you see this? Mg C17, H35, C double bond O twice which is again nothing but a precipitate. Insoluble magnesium stearate. This is known as insoluble magnesium stearate. Over here in the previous reaction we had insoluble calcium stearate because of my calcium salt. Now I have insoluble magnesium stearate because of my magnesium salts which are present in the water. Plus, now plus whatever is remaining, we will just add them and make the byproduct over here. I have two sodiums remaining from here and one SO4 which remains from here. So I have Na2SO4. Now we saw the exact reactions which happen when we add soap to the sodium carbonates, bicarbonates or we add to the sulfates or the chlorides that is to temporary water as well as permanent hard water. Now let us see what is there. This insoluble calcium or magnesium stearate is known as curd that is white scum. So whatever the products we got formed the white scum plus some soluble salt for example we had NaCl, we had NaHC. SO4 and all that. Until all the calcium or magnesium ions are removed in this way, soap will not be available for cleansing purposes. Thus much soap is wasted in hard water. Why? Because the entire soap gets replaced to form a scum. As we saw in the reactions, the entire soap formula was made into scum. So if soap is forming scum, then how will soap be used for cleaning something? And that is the reason why we do not use hard water for cleansing anything, neither for washing clothes nor for washing utensils because the soap itself is not useful there. Moreover, clothing washed with soap in hard water gets a dingy appearance due to the adherence of sticky scum on the fabric. If there is a scum formation, the scum cannot only be on the water. If we are washing clothes, the scum will get stick to the fabric that we are using or the clothes that we are going to wash. And that is the reason why the fabric gets a dingy appearance. Detergents are better cleansing agents than soap as they are not affected by hard water. Detergents are something which we can use which are not much affected by hard water. They get affected but not to that extent as the soap gets affected. So in this video we studied the causes of the hard water. We studied the reactions of soap with all the salts present in the hard water and what the products form. Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay tuned to Ekira and subscribe to Ekira.